the law and practice of maritime transportation within the CIMIC zone, the case of Cameroon. The word economy relies heavily on maritime transport since it provides the easiest means of moving goods from country to country or from one continent to another. Cameroon, among other CIMIC member states, is a coastal state. This proximity of the country to the sea makes it justifiable to investigate the impact of maritime transport on its economy. Despite the plethora of maritime legislation aimed at ensuring smooth practice of maritime transport within the CIMIC zone, the sector still encounters a lot of problems. One thing that threatens maritime transportation and makes the international community worry about its future is piracy. Piracy increases the cost of international maritime transport through an increase in insecurity regarding goods delivery. With the Gulf of Guinea seen worldwide as a new danger zone, it simply means the maritime waters of CIMIC are not safe. This research, whose aim is to examine the applicability of existing maritime laws and the extent to which these laws have improved maritime transport, among other issues, covers carriage of goods and passengers by sea, the obligation of the carrier and shipper, as well as the relevance of marine insurance to maritime transport. The method of data collection used in this study is doctrinal, which involves an analysis of primary and secondary sources of information. The work concludes by recommending, among other issues, a multilateral cross-border initiative for resolving political conflict, as this will establish an effective statehood which stands as a decisive tool for fighting piracy and thus ensuring maritime security within CEMEX subregion and in the Gulf of Guinea as a whole. We equally recommend that Cameroon should ensure understanding of the Regional Maritime Code by Cameroonian involved in maritime transport by translating this law into English for Anglophone Cameroonian. The desire of every nation or region in the world is to be well developed. This development, however, necessitates a sound economy. Transportation in general and maritime transportation in particular plays a prominent role in economic development. From the dawn of civilization, this form of transportation has played a key role in humanity's quest for survival and the pursuit of wealth, power, knowledge, and mastery of his environment. Although it constitutes only a subsector of the entire transport system, maritime transportation contributes immensely to economic growth since a major portion of goods involved in international trade are transported by sea. Transportation therefore entails interaction either between individuals or nations. In this wise, there is need for rules and regulation to govern this sector of human activity. In recognition of the importance and benefit of togetherness, nations have come together to form either federation or union and hence have put in place laws to protect their common interests. This is true of centuries of countries of the Central African subregion that came together under the umbrella of Communiat Ecumenia et Monitor in 1994 to put in place laws including maritime laws to enhance their maritime transport subsector. It is German to point out that two out of the six member states of this subregion are landlocked states. Consequently, the subregion stand to benefit enormously from seaborne trade. Aside its facilitation of international trade, water remains indispensable for the survival of mankind. It covers about 70% of the Earth's surface and serves as liaison between and among states. 
Due to man's quest for wealth and development, he has been compelled to cross the seas and ocean with the aid of vessel of increasing sophistication in pursuit of trade and commerce, the acquisition of new territories, the exploitation and exploration of marine minerals to mention but a few. A ship travels the sea and ocean to other states, they need to comply with a set of laws, those applicable in their state of origin, those applicable in the state of their destination, as well as other international maritime instruments. It is evident, therefore, that maritime law is an admixture of municipal and international laws. Ship or vessel must be identified as belonging to a particular state. Hence, they must be registered and must also comply with a regulation governing their construction and maintenance to ensure seaworthiness. Since ship crossing the seas and ocean generally carry goods and or passengers, there is need for safety rules on the welfare of passengers and the carriage and storage of goods. The owners of the ship must be readily ascertainable and their right to lease or charter their vessel to other parties protected by law. Since conflict may arise when people come together, mechanism must exist to facilitate the resolution of any dispute arising between those involved in this sector, such as vessel owners, cargo owners, passengers, and etc. The marine environment has to be protected against hazardous or illegal substances carried in vessel and which are likely to be discharged into the sea either deliberately, negligently, or in time of emergency. Maritime transportation started in Egypt when ships traded as far as Sumatra, representing one of the longest maritime roads of them. With the growth of technology and development of the steam engine in the 19th century and more recently to diesel and nuclear-powered fleets, this role expanded considerably as ships are no longer subjected to dominant wind patterns. This sector was not well regulated as it is the case today. Maritime transportation operates on its own space, which is at the same time geographical by its physical attribute, strategic by its control, and commercial by its usage. While geographical considerations tend to be constant in time, strategic and especially commercial considerations are much more dynamic. This dynamism is the reason behind the ever-increasing number of maritime legislation and the constant updating of existing maritime instruments. The notion of maritime transportation rests on the existence of regular itineraries, better known as maritime roads. For better circulation, ships are continuously being improved even both in capacity and speed. Nowadays, ships travel faster and carry more goods than before, and the problem posed by these changes include accommodating cargo in the shore facilities. Maritime law, also known as Admiralty law, is that system of law which relates generally to marine commerce and navigation, the carriage by sea of person and property, to ship and shipping, to seamen and to marine affairs, as well as rules governing workers' compensation claim, action in contract and tort arising from commerce on or over the water. Maritime law includes law of the sea which is mainly appropriated to a branch of international law that relate to all aspects of the uses and resources of the ocean and the high sea. This branch of the law deals with the relationship between nation of the world with regard to the uses and resources of the ocean and for the six to balance the two conflicting principles of freedom of the sea and territorial sovereignty. Maritime activities involve nation of the world and for this reason, maritime transaction is international in nature. By implication, shipping or commercial seaborne transport is an international activity, which requires the good will of nation to ensure that safety is maintained for good commercial relationship in shipping practice. 
From the foregone, one realizes that the prime objective of maritime law is to provide guidance and protection in the sector and in a bid to achieve this goal, many international instruments in the form of treaties and of convention are being developed. Thank you.